Costume Nerds, I'm Spencer Williams, co-host and producer of the Art of Costume Podcast. Now, here on the Art of Costume Podcast, my co-host Elizabeth and I get to share in captivating conversations with the industry's leading professionals. But today, we've got something extra special for you. Have you ever wondered how you can take your first step into this fascinating world of costumes? Well, then allow me to introduce you to a game changer. The Costuming Academy. The Costuming Academy is here to provide you with the knowledge, skills, and confidence you need to embark on your journey in a costume industry. From the basics of costuming to the nuances of working on a real film set, the Costuming Academy is designed to prepare you for a career that's as exciting as it is creative. In this special interview, you will meet the brilliant instructors behind the Costuming Academy, Donna Schultz and Sharon Sampson. Donna and Sharon have been members of the Motion Picture Costumers Union for over 30 years and have worked on an impressive lineup of shows such as Westworld, one of my favorites, Big Little Lies, The Patient, Cheers, Family Ties, and so much more. So whether you're an aspiring costumer or just want to brush up on some of your skills, the Costuming Academy has a place for you. I can't wait for y'all to learn more and introduce you to this fantastic world of the Costuming Academy. So without further ado, Let's dive in. I am so pleased to introduce the incredible people behind the Costuming Academy, senior instructors Donna Schultz and Sharon Sampson. Hey, friends, how's it going? Awesome. How are you you having us? (laughs) I'm so excited to talk to you, too. I feel like I've been hanging out with you a lot lately, but I actually haven't seen you in months. So this is pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) This is great. Thank you. This is fantastic. Thank you. (laughs) So you both have had such brilliant careers. And when we first met, it was a bit of a love at first sight for me, because once you started to tell me about your project, I immediately knew that this was something I want to be a part of. But before we dive into the Costuming Academy, I would love to know what it is about costuming that you both love. And what would you say feels this passion? Why have you been, why have you had this long career and you keep going back for more and more? <laughs> I'll, I'll start with Donna. I mean, but we could pass it around. Okay. Uh, it it can be grueling for sure, but there is a point. I was actually on a Westworld season three, and there was a scene that we had been prepping for for a really long time, and it had been very, you know, a lot of work goes into that. And then I started seeing everything, like the background, walking down the halls after they were dressed, and makeup and hair were taken care of. And then I went out to set and saw, and when you see that full scope of every department pulling together and creating something it is like ah and I said in the moment this is why we do what we do it it's somewhat magical and then when you see it on screen and it's it's pretty awesome so it it keeps you coming back for more for sure got a little bit of chills right there Sharon what about (laughs) you (laughs) Um, I would say it's exactly the same thing you know being involved in the process is multi-layered that you have no idea before you get into it, you have no idea what's involved. So it's the coming together of a group of people that are very talented in their jobs. And then in the end, when you see the project on the screen, there's such a sense of pride that you've maybe had something, like if if you've created an article or something that's on camera. I remember the first time, you know, when I first started out, I'm like, I made that. <laughs> There's a sense of pride when you see something that you've actually had your hands on. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Say one other thing. It's also always changing. Like no two days are the same. So it keeps it creative. It keeps it challenging. And I'm always learning something new. Like every project I'm on, it just is completely advances my knowledge and it and it just is always something special and it it's like oh man i didn't know that that's cool you know and get and that's now part of your knowledge base which i love so it's ever changing right it's such a magical experience that i'm sure so many people are dying to get into which we'll we'll talk about shortly but first i probably have to ask you too the hardest question before we get into the costuming academy um <laughs> what are some of your core favorite films and shows that keep you inspired 
You want to start sharing this one? <laughs> um, so I have a little bit of a, a, a skewed answer. And I think the goal uh, as we're creating in, in a film situation is to have the audience fall in love with the characters that we're creating. I think characters create a visual story of who the character is, good, good or bad. I think they can, um, costumes can create a passage of time and involve the evolving of the character and they can show growth. So um, just to name a few of uh, amazing character films would might be Breakfast at Tiffany's, Memoirs of a Geisha, mm. Anna Karenina, um, The Devil Wears Prada. Dirty Dancing. These movies all leave you with an impression that stays stays with you, and it's hard to, in my opinion, it's hard to name just one movie because there's so many that are good. Well, that was a bomb answer, <laughs> but, Sharon. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, uh, I'm sort of a, a period and fantasy fanatic, so I kind of skew towards those as as favorites. Um, I love historically correct, like The Crown and Outlander and things like that as far as TV shows. Um, Westworld 3 and 4 were an honor to work on because we got to do such a wide scope of sci-fi futuristic to deep history, you know, and that was really uh, and such a world in, you know, so many worlds in one show. Um, I do love things like Black Panther and Avatar, those, you know, sci-fi, but I right. also, you know, you'll get any big thing, big historical thing that comes across the screen in a, in a trailer or whatever. I'm like, I'm in, I'm there. I want to see it. I don't care what the topic is. I want to see it. So yeah. maybe it's a, definitely um, can be kind of wide range in that, but it, you get me on those ones. <laughs> sure. Donna's seats at the theaters remain reserved all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So let's get into the Costuming Academy. What pushed you both to launch the Costuming Academy? Well, honestly, it was uh, in 2020. Um, Sharon came to me when we were kind of uh, at a bit of a, you know, we were all sitting at home. and I remember. We were talking talking about the in, you know, industry and what we do. And and Sharon has had a long experience. history and and passion for mentoring the newcomers and and helping guide and so she wanted to do something with that so we we started discussing it and it kind of pulled together and um she's amazing at what she does when with with mentoring and it's just really i'm i'm sweeping in on this one sharon i'm sorry but (laughs) It it also became the let's pay it forward. We have so much knowledge in this industry. And I remember when I started, there was, you know, I had a degree, a theater degree with a focus on costumes. And I, my first night on a set, I, which was of course an all nighter, I didn't know. They handed me a walkie talkie, which I did not know how to use. And then said, set a dressing room. And I was sitting in the backs of a, back of a box truck with the costumes <laughs> and I had to wait there till they called me on this walkie talkie I'm staring at like uh, I don't know so it, it we decided let's get from to the very core of all of this and help people not have to do that fake it till you make it moment <laughs> right I mean a lot of people have anxiety with starting new things so I really think this was such a great way to just just even the basics of like using a walkie talkie, because if you asked me to show you how to sign one up, I wouldn't be able to do it right now. So even the little skills like that, Sharon, what about you? Donna is very complimentary. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I think, um, you know, we've gone through our careers. I've been in the business over, I think we both have over 30 years and you observe uh, working habits and some departments run incredibly smoothly and some don't. And so you look at that and I'm, I'm always the person who's studying the situation and thinking, how can we do it better is there's got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. And so um, in that process, um, we observe what works and what doesn't work. And I think providing people with the correct information, like if we give them a base layer of information, they can operate 
as professionally as we expect them to. And that's the key is that when new people start, we expect them to start at a certain level and they don't always get that information. So we're basically, I've seen it. We handicap people from the very beginning, right? If they don't have the correct information and we're trying to help that, we're trying to support the process, create a network. Um, you know, the mentoring works in a way um, that if they're in a bind, they can, you know, call us or text us for an answer. And I would be so thankful if I had that when I started out. So it's really looking at what we went through and what how we <laughs> suffered. We both have we have we both have starting out stories that you know we don't need to repeat. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I get it. And I mean I just I feel that's so relatable. Anyone would love to just have that relationship where you could text someone and ask help because it's it's a really daunting gain into this industry as I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit. So oh, I'm fortunate enough to have been able to go through the recent five courses at the Costuming Academy. I had a great time and I learned so much. You know, you think you know everything talking from the outside and there's so much you don't know. So I'm so thankful and I can't even imagine starting an industry without chatting with you too. Now, I feel like it would have, I mean, we'll talk about I've had experience and I had that lost day on set for my first time. <laughs> Uh, so the amount of knowledge you two offers just so beyond. Um, so what are the current classes that the Costuming Academy offers? Well, we've started with the uh, unions and productions uh, to explain the layout of that. Uh, and every show has it. So uh, er whether it's non-union or union, they uh, generally have a base of way they work. So and understanding how that is laid out. Uh, we also have uh, the entry level and PA slash, you know, slash PA to explain what the initial duties are. We have a uh, set costumer. It's a real base cover of the responsibilities and what is expected as a set costumer and background costumer. Go on to shopper. So if you're getting started, it just gives you an idea of what you, what's expected for a shopper. And it's uh, uh, tools of the trade, which we'll get into in a bit, I'm sure. But um, it's a <laughs> lot of explaining exactly like walkie talkies and things like that. That every but all the tools that customers use, which can be used in a very unique or unexpected way. We're moving on to some master classes with set costuming, shopper, continuity, uh, wrapping, and uh, coordinator. So we've got a number of classes coming up that are uh, a deep dive and real, uh, extra, you know, really intensive information that will not just be an overview. Oh, wow. So you two are continuously adding classes to the Costuming Academy as well. Absolutely. We've got these, quite a few to go. <laughs> these five are just a brief um, introduction of the duties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to be a student for a long time. Um, <laughs> so as you mentioned, I'll start with Sharon on this one. The first class is about unions and productions. Uh, explain positions available once you gain membership as a costumer. Uh, the course also shows how the costume department interacts with other departments on a film production. And I found the first class to be very exciting because unions and non-unions, it can be a little bit confusing, especially for new, you know, you're jumping out of high school and you're like, I want to be in costume design. You're going to see all this. We're like, what is happening? Yeah. So, yeah. and I've had some experience with this as well. Um, there were so many things I did not know. And I can't imagine trying to join a union without your advice. So why do you feel this class is why do you feel this class is important, especially being the first class, Sharon? Um, I think it's exactly the things that you pointed out. A lot of people join the union and once they get in, they they don't know, like, for instance, how long they have to they have to be a member for two years before they can, you know, become a key or, you know, all of these funny rules. They're kind of like unwritten rules that um, they're in the book, but, you know, nobody reads the book, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big. Yeah. But um, so it's just a general overview of how um, you can maneuver the union and and then we go on to productions. And this, I think, is my favorite part of this. Um, in putting this together, I, it was a really interesting exercise because 
I was on a show and I said, well, I'm just going to go around and talk to some of these departments and see how the costume department influences their job, right? I want to know how we interact. And I know the basics. I know, um, for instance, sound requires us to to mic somebody, but there's intricacies involved. And, um, you know, like props, we always work very closely with if we're going to, if somebody's going to have sunglasses or, you know, any prop item, we always work together with the prop department. And I've always had like really good friends in the prop department. And also um, talking to transportation, I, uh, as a supervisor, I find transportation, you know, incredibly important to my job, right? Um, They can make or break us. They can, um, you know, we can have a great relationship with them, which I usually do. And um, they help us every day uh, to get, for instance, the rack to set or, you know, moving the, putting the trailer in the correct position, whatever it is, transportation's incredibly helpful, but every other department has some sort of input. So interviewing those people and asking, you know, like the art department, how, how can we be of better service to you? You know, so all of these things kind of entered into it. And, um, I would really encourage people to, to, like we didn't talk when I started in the business, we did not talk to another department. We just did our business and went on and (laughs) becoming involved with the whole group was eye opening. Mm. It was just like, I I encourage everyone to do that. I think it's, uh, it, it is important to know how much we interact with the other departments. And I don't, I I rarely think there's one we don't. I mean, we interact with locations. We interact, obviously, with the production office uh, set deck, um, you know, all of these. And and on set, it can be really important to know who the people are that you're going to be um, around and what they do. And that can that's something that can be very overwhelming and intimidating when somebody's starting out. So we want to help guide that. But why these are important people to know and how it helps your job. So it's it's something that we really realized was at the very beginning, we have to start there yeah. so it can understand what, why, and what what is the layout of a production company, so. And then going into the second course, which I actually found the most interesting, um, just a little story in recent years, I was a costume PA on set. It was a two day production. And I remember again, it was my very first day on the set ever too. So it was a whiplash moment. I remember just being like, I could do this. I can't do that. Oh, you know, I need a tool bag. Wait, I was supposed to be having this or pinning things on hangers. It was just like all craziness. So going back and taking this course at the costuming Academy, I was like, man, I wish I took this class the day before I got there. So uh, entry-level costuming was really comprehensive. Um, It even goes through items to bring on a first day, what PAs can and cannot do. Uh, So what sort of lessons will you learn in this class and why are they so valuable, Donna? I feel like they, you learn, uh, you, you get a head start. You get a bit of a head start on what to expect when you enter a department, when you're coming in new and you've not done any of this before. It gives you a bit of an understanding of the layout of the department. Uh, Chances are what will be expected of you, um, giving you some insight basically to to and kind of like you said, gives you a little bit of an overview of what to expect, obviously, is. half the battle i think yeah. <laughs> uh i think it's uh you know important to understand the processes and why these things are so important uh it can be very cost costly if mistakes are made mm-hmm. and uh there's a ton of money running through the department at all times and when you know whatever your part of that your your job is uh it has to be done well and so it's nice to have a little bit of a going in and understanding prior to having to be expected to do a job a certain way. Right. Sharon, is that how you felt about entry-level costuming? Yeah. I I mean, you know, looking at it, uh, it's a little tricky because 
you're you might be hired. There's a position in the costume actual office called a floating customer, and that floating customer can be assigned a number of different duties. And so, if you've just gotten into the union and you've been hired to be a floater, floating customer, um, that can entail every part of the department's duties, which is crazy because these people <laughs> are just starting out, right? So it could entail, for instance, you know, processing two racks of um, purchased uh, clothing that all has to go back in a day or rental costumes that have to go back by a certain hour. And you have to know the the, the minutiae of these, you know, how to process all of this. You know, you might be sent to relieve someone on set um, for a couple hours or, you know, any of these things kind of can be thrown at you. And if you don't have a concept and like you're, you've just gotten into the union, I personally don't know how these people do it. Like <laughs> you have to find somebody in the department and you have to ask questions basically. Right. <laughs> so we want to stop that is, is the answer to this question. Um, we want people to walk in and know how to organize the department, know how to process returns, um, know about set, know what you should have, know what questions to ask. That actually kind of leads me into our next question, which revolves around the third class set costuming protocols, uh, which covers the basics and how to prepare when you get a background set job or day check job. Uh, this information is so important as you really break down all of the different types of costumer roles. I wasn't even aware that there were so many types that I heard words before that I never heard of. <laughs> so what are some of the various costumer roles? Sir, um, first of all, it can be broken up into uh, background and principal, and then you can add in stunt customers. So <laughs> there's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole other aspect of being on set and how to handle stunts and and that kind of thing. Uh, background and and principal customers tend to, unless it's a very small show, like I did the show book club or the film book club, and we had five in our department. We go to Westworld, there's like 45 people, you know, in the <laughs> department. So everybody kind of crosses over. And that's also another good thing to know about going back to the last one is how much crossover there can be. Everybody's doing either a very specific job or they're doing all the jobs, you know, that kind of thing. But on, on the background side there can be a, a key background uh customer there can be the set customers there can be a trailer customer and then on the principal side there's principal set customers who handle the the actual principals and a generally a trailer customer uh, you know there's uh on bg side there can be fitters and and the prep on the prep side prior to and prepare all that's going out to the wardrobe trailer for background the networking the next day. So there's a, a lot of different things where you stay in your lane sometimes and don't cross over because that's your job. And that's a big job. You got to get that part done. So um, I would say in this position, um, you would want to know the things that you would like to do. I mean, you know, there, there are the crossover positions, but if you specialize in something, like if you specialize in fitting background for period costumes, you know, that's a really good little niche. And, and um, um, so if you don't know what you're being hired for, I would say, you know, try to get information from whoever, either the key or whoever hired you to find out what you're going to be doing and just ask around, uh, you know, to find out what your responsibilities are. The, the, the differences can be huge, but I would say definitely you should know sync on set um, you know, be able to take uh, non blurry photos, you know, all of these things are. <laughs> um, you, you think know, it'd be it, obvious, but maybe it's not. <laughs> I know, right? But um, not always. <laughs> yeah, be it can be really fun and it can also be a very um, high pressured, stressful scenario, especially if you're on stunts. So, I mean, some people specialize in stunts and um, that requires some special skills. Right. And by the way, I want to add each of these great classes come with some fantastic downloads. I download all of them. I'm probably going to make a little binder after we're done talking. Uh, everything from production terms to working with costume houses. There's so much to learn from these little downloads. What you two have probably been 
working on these for a long time, I'm sure, gain all this information on there. Would you say these are really helpful? Um, one of the students that um, went through the classes said these are gold and she's never giving them up. So I, yeah. I thought that was a nice, <laughs> a nice compliment. But yeah, we want to make it easy for people. We, you know, I think um, before when I started, people coveted their um, Rolodex and, you know, hid information from everybody because they thought that <laughs> that's what made them valuable. And I think what I'm, what we're seeing it now is that everyone's sharing information and helping people become better. So, I mean, that's our goal for sure. Right. That's so key to all of this. I mean, you're not going to find many people who are willing to share so much great information to help you get started. So to me, that is the value in the Cosme Academy right there. <laughs> um, and I second that. I think those downloads are gold. So Good. I'm going to keep them forever. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so everyone loves shopping, right? I mean, I personally am not a you shopper, <laughs> but <laughs> most normal people like shopping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but shopping for a film or television project is a bit different. And the fourth class is shopping and returns. And this class explains the intricacies of shopping and how to do it efficiently, safely, and probably what's most importantly in a quick matter. Uh, why is it important for those wanting to find their start in the industry to understand how to do shopping and returns properly? I'll go to Donna for this one. Uh, it's serious business. It is uh, It is not a stroll around the mall looking for the cute outfit. It's, right. <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, sometimes uh, you can be shopping for six characters all at once and you have to kind of, you have all your notes with you, but you have to keep in mind as you're going into any particular store, what do I need for that? You know, any one of those here in this store, uh, there's a lot of knowledge that you have to know. I didn't know when I started what a studio service was. And mm -hmm. I think there is a, uh, an understanding of getting into this designer's head as <laughs> my big one and, un and really understanding and listening to the words they express. So you can go find what they're, you're their eyes, basically. You are their eyes and you bring back for them what they can't do for themselves because they're pulled in 50 different directions. So it's a, it's very serious. There's generally a time element involved and it's a, uh, it can be a very big daunting job. Even looking for the cute outfit in the mall will have a lot of requirements on that outfit. Right. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a, you have to also have a big knowledge base of where to go and what your options are and where to find things. So it's uh there, it's a big one. And then returns, you top it off with the returns. And there's just, like I said earlier, it's a lot of money flowing through the, the department that has to be managed well. And if that's not well taken care of and, and you and the, and others are on top of it, get kind of costly <laughs> <laughs> i'm a little nervous right now <laughs> sharon what do you think about shopping and returns it's a um, big job i donna's covered it really well um she at, at some points works as a shopper and sometimes um a key but uh, the shopper aspect we interviewed our friend kate lombardi and i love this line that she says it takes encyclopedic knowledge to become a cost uh, shopper. Mm -hmm. And what she means by that is um, if you think of sourcing um, something all over the city, all over the country or in another, all you know, through the United States or through another country, that can be crazy. So the pressure is on to find something as soon as you possibly can and get it delivered to the department. So it really takes um, someone that's, in my opinion, just focused on shopping. You know, if if I'm if I'm asked to find one piece that's different than um, someone that's shopping full time, they they fill so many needs. And like Donna said, if you just think of um, the fact that you're creating shopping for outfits for six characters and think of every piece that they need, that's an incredible amount of shopping so um as far as returns returns go um i really think there's an art to the process and um I, I think that sometimes people think that they can just shop because they like to shop and i disagree with that wholeheartedly <laughs> yes. but um 
As far as the returns, they kind of fall into my wheelhouse uh, in the, I usually am in the department more so than out in the field. And there is, I have a whole setup um, I include in the um, return section. There's a, a map that I use to create um, uh, the department structure for um, studio returns, store returns, online returns, uh, rental returns, all of that to have it. Uh, work efficiently there's an actual layout um, map for you in the in the sheets anyways um, it's the reason that uh, returns are so important is the fact that we have so much money out on credit cards and so my focus is to turn that money over as quickly as possible turn the receipts over as quickly as possible so that there can be more money to shop with and that's really the focus um, when I coordinate that's really the focus of the paperwork. Wow. Um, and finally, the fifth class, and perhaps one of my favorites, was tools of the trade, which breaks down the tools that are helpful to customers and why. Uh, this class was so comprehensive and went through everything from set racks, modesty and comfort wear, to my favorite topic, which is aging, distressing, and dye supplies. I've always wanted to learn how to do this. So when I heard this, I perked up. I was like, oh, okay, I need to take some notes here. Um, I'm a big fan of that process. So what are some other tools students might learn from this class that are very helpful in the process? Um, well, we've covered a lot of them. And and I think the the one thing, um, this is a maybe unconventional answer, but we as customers tend to have to troubleshoot a lot. So the tools we can, you know, we've gone through the tools that we use all the time and, and there are the basic, it's the basic list. Um, but we're always looking to solve a problem that we need to solve on set, for instance, you know, if there's a special effect that needs a fishing line or, you know, whatever it is, we have to MacGyver the situation, right? <laughs> so it's always that um, open mind to think of, you know, something that works better than we previously used. So I think that's the trick in oh. using tools, aside from the basics. <laughs> Don, I believe there was even a little clip of you using a hat sizer. I mean, there's all sorts <laughs> <Yeah>. of tools. <laughs> it, exactly. And there, uh, you know, it it's not something that is necessarily something that comes naturally to people. Uh, we go over every hanger that we use. And I mean, it's surprising that we use them in like, that there are such specific uses for certain ones. And There's I, such a science to hangers. I, I, I was blown what? away. <laughs> Very Joan <laughs> Crawford that, moment. Can you get me a strut hanger? And, you know, <laughs> if you had not had an experience with it, what's a strut hanger? You know, at that kind of thing. And I was working on Westworld, which obviously was a had a, an element of it that was Western. And I, I started asking who knew what a boot jack was and there was a lot of customers on that show that did not know what a boot jack is and i can explain it now if you'd like <laughs> but yeah, i don't was, know what a boot jack is <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a tool to help cowboy boots come off or any kind of boot come off your foot so oh, okay yeah, you step on it, it makes it instead of pull, you know trying to pull it off and you know fall off a chair you're actually it, it's a <laughs> tool that makes it very simple. So it was interesting that I thought, man, there's a lot that people do not know how to either use or what the term is or how that they've seen it maybe, but don't know what the name is. And just, uh, let's get at the basics and, and explain it all. So that was the, the thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, the costume academy currently includes 20 video lessons, 27 reference PDFs, and five very helpful quizzes, which I aced all of them. Uh, but that isn't <laughs> all. You two have really built a community, which I think is really one of the most valuable parts of the costume academy, the ability to connect with other new customers and also to be able to connect with you two and get advice. So, uh, Sharon, what? tell me a little bit about the community you two have built at the costume academy. This might be my favorite part. I'm not sure. But um, so what <laughs> this stemmed from the fact that um, when I started out, you know, when you start out, like we've talked about, you, you, you're you kind of gathering information. Uh, you strike friendships with people that help you along the way. And sometimes you're friends with some of these people for, you know, I've had 
people that I've started out with, we've been friends since the beginning. So that's a long friendship. You don't really um, expect that when you're starting out. So what we wanted to do is create that camaraderie and make it available. We, we um, do different sorts of things. We do, you know, biweekly um, Zooms and, and it's interesting because in there, there's all different levels. So that's what we're trying to create with the community, a place to um, network, uh, share information, maybe get questions answered, maybe get guidance uh, and create that friendship that keeps going, you know, and you can get maybe jobs from or, you know, advice or whatever it is. We just want to create a very comfortable, safe uh, community. And Donna, to that point, you know, perhaps one of the most valuable parts to the Cosmic Academy is the mentoring piece. You, too, specifically provide support to answer any question that may come up on a job and even make introductions to your own network. I mean, what two great connections you could have than Donna and Sharon from the Cosmic <laughs> Costuming Academy. So tell me a little bit about the support system you two offer. Uh, I think it was really developed, like I said earlier about Sharon's love of mentoring. Uh, and she was doing this for some students that had just come out of some um, schools in LA here. And it was really something that they found very beneficial and being able to text her and, and had been had a difficult situation at work. How do I handle this? I don't know what to do here. And that kind of thing. And we we thought, you know, this is actually something that's needed as you're getting going. You don't have that um, experience and established understanding of how to navigate. And you're in a whole new arena being in this industry, which is unlike any other. And so it just, we felt having that support as we're starting getting them going and getting them uh, on this path. Uh, it was important to have that support system for them, a safety net for them, basically, that gives them a place to go, how to ask questions. And in the community, the nice thing is there, they can text others, what have you experienced here? Or I I, I got offered a job I can't take, is anyone available to take that? So with between us being here for them, they also tend to lean on each other as well, it has proven. So that's been a very valuable thing we have realized so yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think any new customer would be lucky to have you two as mentors so such a great resource uh what is something that has surprised both of you in the launch of the costuming academy when talking with members of the community you've created um i would say um the receptiveness um to the information you know sometimes you go along the way and you collect information and um you just, it's, it's, it's part of the growth process as a customer, right? You just learn something new every single day and you keep going. And all of a sudden you have this huge amount of knowledge that you take for granted. And so it wasn't, it was, I think the point where I started breaking this down and trying to figure out how to explain all this stuff and then um, handing it out to others that, you know, the comments that they make, one, one of the PAs said, you know, these classes are so helpful that I wish I would have had these when I started um, as a PA. And again, at 30 years, you don't think about it that way. You just think I'm going to work, I'm doing my job. But some of this information is so helpful to people. And um, so I can say that the the joy of sharing it is huge. And to, to know that we're helping someone and um, making it easier for them is fantastic. Right. Donna, what surprised you about the Costuming Academy? Two things. Um, the the response has been fantastic. So that is edifying for sure. Uh, the other thing that I found really interesting as we started in on these basic classes is and and starting to write them, going back to the very beginning and writing down those micro details that speaking about something and I was like, well, wait a minute, what does that actually mean? And having to go back to the very core of it in the very beginning, that surprised me, like Sharon said, how much we take for granted and don't realize that was that was a learning experience somewhere along the line. So let's let's talk about that and get that at the early part. 
So that has been something that I think caught us both off guard at the very beginning, for sure, in in the process of making these classes. So I think uh, that it's also beneficial to those that have taken it, I think that has been really rewarding and and glad that that actually meant something to them. So for me, I'm so happy for you too. This is so exciting, and I just can't can't wait to see where the Costuming Academy goes next. <laughs> okay, well, I mean we're at the end here. So how can people sign up for the Costuming Academy? Where do they go? Where do these classes take place? The costumingacademy.com is uh, that simple. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, that's the website. And you can go directly to there. There's a, you can walk yourself through what we have to offer there. And it's an easy sign up process. And it's all online, which is the great part about this is it makes it flexible for people's hours. It's sometimes really hard to get to an in person class. So we've made it so that the working, person can take them at their leisure and walk through them at, as they need to. So that's, that's it. The costumingacademy.com. Love it. Donna Schultz and Sharon Sampson it has been such a pleasure meeting you two and working with you over the past few months. And I'm just so thrilled about this project. And I hope everyone runs over to the costuming Academy because this is something really special. And I think it, it's so so valuable to have mentors like you too, um, to learn even what seems like most simple things could turn into a lifelong career. So I really, really um, implore everyone to explore this opportunity. So thank you so much for joining me. This has been a real joy. Thank, thank you, Spencer. Great to talk with. So thank you so much. We enjoyed thank it. you. <laughs>